here he is. The Gypsy King, is he there? Hello, He's Tyson. Here. How, how are you? Get in, Tyson. How are we feeling? I'm very good. Very good. On top of the world. Well, it's certainly nice to talk to you again, Tyson. Remember we did that uh, interview back in uh, in late January when the fight got canceled. You, me, Turkey, and uh, obviously Alexander Usyk. That was intense stuff. I felt, especially between you, that was that was that was wild stuff. What, 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 how would you describe your your sort of general mood on that day? Because I wasn't quite sure how everyone was feeling. Intense and up for a fight. On that day, and now here we are three or four months later, and you're three days away. Tyson, I've been watching a lot of your interviews and uh, all the content that you've been doing leading up to this fight. And one thing that keeps um, coming up and, and it kind of struck a chord with me was this. Everyone's asking you a million questions about Undisputed and the belts, and are you nervous? And I, and I noticed that like you're getting kind of tired of all this stuff. You've told us a million times, you don't get nervous, you don't care about the belts, all this stuff. And you always go back to Monday morning, You'll be walking your dog on the beach. You'll be with your family. You always go back to that. I've heard you say this now 10 times, and it's a beautiful sight, and it's a beautiful image of a guy who's on top of the world. The world will be watching you on Saturday, and then there you are over on the bay walking your dog with your kids picking up the poop. Why do you keep going back to that image? Because it's grassroots, always. And the quicker I can get back to grassroots and reality, the better. Because living as a rock star on top of the planet with unlimited funds and unlimited everything you want. There's no sort of way to live. That's factual. And I've experienced it. And I know nothing good can ever come out of it. The good side of life is appreciating small things, taking one day at a time, setting short-term goals, being happy and contented at home and in your relationship with your wife and kids. And that's that's the best thing any any man could be. A happy home man, a man at home who's happy, is on top of the world. Take all the achievements and all the fancy stuff away. If I was just at home having a cheese sandwich and a cup of tea and had a nine-to-five job, but I had a loving wife and a loving family, I'm a very blessed man. But all the other stuff on top of that is an added bonus. Do you feel you need to talk about that and to remind yourself of that, to not fall into the trap of buying into all this hoopla and buzz? You know, I've, I've, I've grew older and wiser since... I beat Klitschko. I was in, bought into all that. Uh, I'm a legend. I'm a superstar. I'm this, I'm that. And you live and learn, don't you? Learn from your mistakes. And now I just treat it as a job. Uh, get paid, get laid, go out, go home. There's nothing more to it, really. Go there, collect me bank check, and off back to the bay. Run away nice and swiftly. See you later. And there'll be no talk of boxing. I don't want to watch any videos. I don't want to watch any interviews. I'm not interested until I get another date which has already been confirmed, but I can't say. Uh, do you want to confirm it for us now? Do you want to announce it for us now? Just just us mates. Oh, I can't, I can't announce it. I'll leave His Excellency to announce that one. Okay, fair enough. Um, just curious, are you happier walking your dog with your family than you are walking out to the ring or even on fight week and all doing all this stuff? Are you in a happier state when you are doing that? And I'm happy because I'm in a good place. Um, I've, I've had a good, good training camp and I've prepared well and I'm going to do the fight whether or not on Saturday night. Um, and then I'll be back to what I do and I'll be happy both ways this is all fun and games for a little minute while it lasts five minutes of fame and then when it's gone I'm back to reality back to doing the normal stuff and I'm back to the cheap stores and all that sort of stuff discount bargain stores and whatever else we have in the Bay Area Can I ask what was the turning point for you from the guy who did buy into all that stuff Klitschko fight etc to now the man who just wants to be with his family um, and then left alone, essentially. Yeah, um, I think I asked God, before I was world champion, I asked God to don't let me fall into the trap of every heavyweight champion in history before me. Alcohol, drugs, women, clubbing, whatever else you can think of. All heavyweight champions get trapped in that rubbish. And I was really asking not to get caught up in all that sort of stuff. Um and I believe that I was, I had to go through it to be shown the reality of it all. And I used to take everything for granted, no matter what I'd won, championships, whatever I've achieved, whatever I um, got in my life, I was never happy. I was always hunting for more and I was always never appreciative. So I think I had to have it all taken away from me, even my sanity, so I could go back to brass tacks and then appreciate fresh air, appreciate having a nice cold Diet Coke, appreciate sitting in a room and just being normal 
and having a normal life. And now everything's come back to me tenfold, just like good old Job. And um, and here I am, the other side. I've learned I'm wiser and I'm older, and I've I've learned from my mistakes. And you know, we're all humans. We make mistakes, and we're, we're natural born sinners. However, it's um, it's a learning curve. And a man who keeps making the same mistakes is a mug. And um, some sometimes I fall into that trap of of being that mug, but. I like to say I learn from it and move on. What is the difference, Tyson, between this man that we're speaking to right now and the one back in October who was three days away from fighting Francis Ngannou? Spiritually, mentally, obviously physically, you look quite different. You look to be in tremendous, maybe the best shape that we've ever seen you in. But internally, what is the difference between you today and back then? Nothing. Obviously, I'm in better physical shape, body-wise. Greg Marriott's done a fantastic job. Um, I'm in I'm in fantastic shape, you know. I've winded the clock back ten years or more, um, but mentally, physically, emotionally, nothing's nothing's different. Uh, you you did say after the fact that there were all these dinners, there were all these events leading up to Francis. This time, it seems like there's a lot less on your plate. Did you ask for that? Did you try to not recreate that same type of um, you know schedule so that you don't get distracted and pulled in a million different directions? I am doing a lot of media. A lot of stuff going on. Listen, I had a lot of um, issues going into the Nganu fight, which I don't talk about because I don't make excuses at all because I'm not interested because after the event, it's not worth talking about. So I'm not one of these people who blames an elbow or a trainer or a piano lesson. I'm not interested. It's in the past. So we just look forward to this fight and getting a, going in there and doing what i got to do and then going home, getting out of here. But are there lessons that you learned it matters. Are there lessons that you learned from that experience that you, you've applied this time around? You learn from every experience. And if you don't, then it's not worth having the experience. And why do you consider it an excuse? You won the fight. So I'm just, I, I guess we're just trying to like paint the picture of the difference between you now and the you from, you know, October. Um, because I feel like you're, you're in a different kind of mood as well. Um, I don't know if... I'm just relaxed, you know, I'm relaxed and I'm... Um ready to rock and roll. I mean, I'm in good spirits mentally and emotionally and physically, and I can only do what I can do. I'll go in there and do the fight, get paid, go home. There's nothing more to say, is there? I could glitz it up and make it a big fantasy scene for you, but I'm never not about that. I'm about going in there, getting paid, getting laid, and going home. That's it, bosh, out of here. I'm on that big red eye jet, straight out of here, straight away, back to my wife and kids and my dog. I love it. Will, will you... Anyway, a couple of weeks, and that's it. Will your family be at the fight? I've got my brothers and my daddy and I'm one of my kids here, yeah. Okay. Um, and, and speaking of your father, do you, uh, the, the, the clip of you seeing your father cut has gone viral just because it's a very funny interaction where you said, what if you touch your forehead? It, it, do, you, do you ever in a moment, in a quiet moment behind the scenes, say, hey, you don't need to do this. You don't need to get fired up. We're all good. Like, Do you ever try to, to calm him down or is that just who he is? No, my dad is my Angelo Dundee. Yeah. You know, he's my salesman. He um he just adds so much hype and so many views to anything we do. So fantastic. That little ruckus he did probably had half a million pay per view buys. Crazy. The world was talking about it, even more so than the actual event. Just brings eyes from all over the planet to this event and to Saudi Arabia. So it was fantastic. He's the promoter's dream. Um, is he okay? Did he need stitches? Yeah. No, he's okay. Little cut's not going to stop me, Dad. That's for sure. I love it. Um, and 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 what have you? You know, I've I've seen clips of Usyk talking about you and your physique and saying all this stuff about the weight that you're losing. What kind of vibe, if any, have you gotten from him? I know you guys haven't faced off yet, but what are you sensing from him? Oh, you know, the man's a boxer with a pair of boxing gloves on. He's going to come and punch, try and punch me in the face, I suppose. And I'm going to try and do exactly the same to him. So there's no. Um, Nothing more to it. You know, a lot of people make a lot of stuff up in their minds about like mind games and whatever else. But I don't know. If, you, if you're going to let something someone says to you affect your performance, then you're a shit house anyway. You shouldn't be boxing. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. um, I asked uh, Frank Warren this question about an hour and a half ago, but I'd love to get your take on it as well because I've also noticed in some of the interviews that you talk about how happy you are fighting in Saudi Arabia because you love the way they treat you there and uh, you, you feel comfortable, you feel welcome. It's a, and, you, and you say you feel a lot more comfortable and welcome than you do in the UK, except for you know, all the taxes that they, they ask you to give out. 
Uh, otherwise, you don't feel like you get that same type of love and respect. Can I ask you to expand on that? I don't know what Frank Warren said about that, but um, I like Saudi Arabia. It's a good, good country, and I really recommend it. I recommend people to come here and have a holiday, Jeddah or wherever, all over Saudi. People are very welcoming and homely people, and I can only speak from personal experience. And before coming to Saudi in 2019, I heard bad reports about it all. But when I got off the plane, I realized it was all bullshit what people were talking. And you can't believe anything anyone says unless you experience it for yourself. And I've, I've had nothing, and me and my family have had nothing but love from this country and the beautiful people, and it's a beautiful country. And I'm honored, honored to be a part of their 2030 vision. And, and to be clear, that is consistent with what I was saying. I was saying about the way you are treated back home, the respect as opposed to the respect that you receive in Saudi Arabia. I, I was asking... Yeah, like, I, don't, I don't know if... If anyone gets special treatment of any governments and that, I don't know if John Jones gets sent um, the jet from Biden or not. I'm not sure if Air Force One picks up John Jones and takes him to his uh, fights and stuff. But over here, you get it. You get uh, presidential treatment. Um, you know, it's just fantastic. The, when I'm at home, I don't get sent uh, private jets from the prime minister or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's fantastic. fantastic to be a part of it. And I think it's, I think it's just Saudi. I don't think it's any other sports countries, any countries around the world that do that. Or if they do, I'm not privy to it and I'm not aware of it. Maybe you'll know. I don't know. No, I, I, I don't. I don't get that. Believe it or not, no one sends me any private jets from any country. So I'm. Oh. I, <laughs> I don't know if you could believe that, but I'm not quite baller status uh, like that just yet. Um, could, could I ask about all the, you know, the the love between Frank and and Eddie? Do you feel funny about all of this because, like, you and Frank were kind of, you know you were in this together and now all of a sudden I see him singing Kumbaya with Eddie up on the stage. I know you don't feel the exact same way. And I know you were asked about the five on five and don't really care to talk too much about it, but is it a little weird for you to see them in such good graces? Let me tell you, money speaks every single language in the world. The dollar speaks every language and it can make two worst enemies, best friends. I just have seen with Frank and Eddie and that's it. But see me, if I don't like somebody, you give me 20 million. I still don't like the focus. Not interested. So that's the difference. Mm -hmm. um, apologies if you've been asked this already, but your, your namesake, uh, Mike Tyson, is returning to the ring on July 20th. Some some fighters yeah. feel a little bit weird about this. How do you feel about it? Only, only fighters. What's that? Only fighters who are not paid and not getting laid. Mm -hmm. but they're the fighters who are jealous. People, negative people who are not making any money and don't are not set to gain anything from this fight between Jake Paul and Mike Tyson. I think it's fantastic. I think I think it's creating a lot of money. One for Texas, selling out all them tickets and eat that means drinks, alcohol, food and beverage, everything for the local area. Big influx in, in, in dollars being spent in, in the local area. And then you got obviously all of Mike's teams are being fed and all of Jake's teams being fed out of it. So there's a lot of mouths being fed. A lot of people's rents are being paid. So I don't know what's to be negative about it. I'm over the moon for it. I'm looking forward to it. You'll be watching. I get to see the legend in Mike Tyson back in the ring in my era. Fantastic. I already saw one in against Roy Jones. It was fantastic. So I get to see him again live and exclusive as an adult. What what a treat. And then you got like Jake Paul. Him and his brother have done fantastic. You know, I know we've got a rivalry going on with Tommy and that, but I got to speak it how I see it. Jake and uh, Paul have done, Jake and Logan have done absolutely fantastic for for themselves from becoming like young kids to be multimillionaires and YouTubers and wrestlers and boxers and everything else and entertaining. So I know they've got a lot of haters and stuff. However, I'm not one of them. I'm a fan and I support it. I support people going in and making lots of millions of dollars out of boxing, my sport. And it only makes it better for young people who don't get paid because more people will see the fight and be interested in it. And think, you know what? I'm going to watch a young kid who I don't even know. It might be a good fight. So more eyes to the to the game, and it um, it's better. Uh, do you, do you have a sense as to who's going to win? Who do you think is going to win? It's kind of a hard one to call, right? Is it going to be a, an actual decision, or is it an exhibition, or what? No, is, it's, I'm not sure. It's it's a it's a pro fight, um, fourteen ounce gloves, but two minute rounds, eight two minute rounds, um, but it's pro. Like there's there's no restrictions, no stipulations. There's none of that. Listen. If Mike Tyson hits anybody, I don't care if he's 90, he's going to knock him out cold, isn't he? It's I am Mike Tyson. 
he's a, the baddest man on the planet, you know. And Jake Paul, obviously, he's very experienced now. He's had a lot of tough fights. He's had a lot of good fights. So, and he's probably a quarter of the man's age. Um, but obviously, I have to back Mike Tyson. I'm named after the legend, and I back him. Fair as enough. he always backs me. I'm backing Mike for the knockout. Come on, Mike. Yes. Uh, I loved your walkout before the Nganu fight. I love chasing status. Ba da da, ba da da. What a great song. Are we doing that again, or are we switching it up? I will be switching it. Okay. What do we got this time? Uh, I can't let it out of the bag. You're gonna have to wait and say tune in on Saturday night to find out. Fair enough. Uh, I'm, uh, and we'll let you go in two minutes. Um, a uh, big fan of your brother Shane. I like I like listening to Shane talk, and I like his vibe. And he's a brutally honest guy, and that's what I think is sort of a hallmark of the Fury family. Oh, there he is. What's up, Shane? How are you? Much respect. I didn't even know you were oh, there. Oh, I can the compliments. Hey, shout out to Shane. I didn't even know you were there. Uh, well, you know what? You're yeah, sitting right, there. Shane. I th I saw after the Nganu fight, you were you were brutally honest about your brother's performance, and I said, you know what? That's a that's a good brother. You told it like it is. You didn't sugarcoat things. You got the win, but you were honest. And a lot of people wouldn't do that, whether they're on the team or they're, they're blood. And so I was, I was wondering, and maybe you can weigh in after Tyson does, A, the question to you would be, you know, why you did that, why you felt the need to be that brutally honest, and, and Tyson, how it felt when you did hear your brother's brutally honest assessment of your performance against Francis. I didn't need a brutally honest performance. You know, I'm a realist myself. Um, so I don't need anybody to tell me good or bad. I'm not someone who needs a pats on the back or blowjobs or anything like that. I'm just original OG. I know if I've done good or done bad, do you know what I mean? Um, negative or positive comments don't affect me because they're just someone's opinion, do you know what I mean? But listen, to have a family around you who tell you how it is, good, bad, they're indifferent, it's always useful as well. Shane's told me to retire about a million times <laughs> um, throughout the last 25 years, so, <laughs> you know, we have our up and downs. No, what, what what gets me? Uh, I know what he can really do. Um, so when he don't, when, when we're not seeing it in the ring, it's um, it's quite frustrating. But he's had a good camp this one, and there's no excuses. And hopefully he'll do his job. Well, I I appreciate you both. Thank you very much. Good luck to you, Tyson. Always a pleasure and an honor to have you before these big fights. Good luck on Saturday. Oh. Can't wait to see it all go down. Just tune in. Don't forget. And Monday, yeah. don't Thank forget you. to pick up the poop off the ground, all right? Don't be leaving it on the ground over there. Don't forget that. I won't. I won't. <laughs> all the best, Tyson. All the best. There he is, the Gypsy King, Tyson Fury. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it very much. Hey, if you like this video, give us the old thumbs up. Subscribe as well. You can get many more of these videos on the channel. So please do that. We would love you forever if you did so.